guys and welcome back to the video on familial adenomatous polyposis. In this video, we will continue with the diagnosis, the complications and the treatment of the disease. So let's get right back into it. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of FAP syndrome. Colonoscopy is the usual diagnostic test of choice as it favors the common right side location of polyps. A person with more than 100 adenomatous colon polyps is considered to have FAP. Genetic testing provides the ultimate diagnosis in 95% of cases and genetic counseling is usually needed in families where FAP has been diagnosed. Testing can only show if an individual is susceptible to FAP or rule it out, meaning whether or not they inherited the defective APC gene. It cannot determine the actual condition of the patient and this can only be found by direct physical examination. An ultrasound of the abdomen and blood tests evaluating liver function are often performed to rule out metastasis to the liver. So just something as a side note here, remember that we have these patients who are prone to the development of colon cancer. And one of the things specific to colon cancer is that it likes to frequently metastasize to the liver. And therefore a liver ultrasound can be very efficient in checking if our patient's liver is healthy and no cancerous cells are found there. The complications of FAP. So the complications of FAP include the following. Again, colorectal cancer, which is 100% in untreated patients. Duodenal or periampulary adenocarcinomas, which occur in 4 to 12% of patients. Desmoid formations, as many as 20% typically post-colectomy, so meaning after the colon has been resected. Other cancers including a medulloblastoma, hepatoblastoma, thyroid cancer, gastric cancer, pancreatic cancer, and adrenal cancer, and the development of rectal cancer in patients with a retained rectum. So as you can see, the complications of patients with these disease is not just the colon cancer, which is found in most of them, meaning 80 to 100% of them, but we also have the development of other cancers, again because of the cause of the disease, which is the defect in the tumor suppressor gene. And this is why our patients are more prone to the development of other cancers in the body. Because if this gene is responsible in suppressing the development of cancer cells, it's not only not going to suppress the cancer cells in the colon, but it's going to do so in the whole body itself. And this is just a supplement slide in addition to the slide before this, and this tells us what are the estimated cancer risks associated with FAP. And again, we have that colorectal cancer, desmoid tumors, small bowel cancers, pancreatic cancers, papillary thyroid cancers, hepatoblastomas, brain or central nervous system tumors, stomach cancer, bile duct cancer, and adrenal gland cancer. So you can see here we have the percentages on the side. So now let's talk about the screening options for classic FAP. A sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy every one to two years starting at age 10 and 11 is very helpful. Yearly colonoscopy once polyps are found until a colectomy is planned and people with classic FAP may need a colectomy which is the surgical removal of the entire colon at some point due to a high number of polyps and a high risk of colorectal cancer. This is a major surgery and possible side effects may include a need for a colostomy. After colon surgery, surveillance of the lower tract with a sigmoidoscope should continue with a regular frequency depending on the type of surgery. Every 6 to 12 months if some rectal tissue remains and every 1 to 4 years if all rectal tissue has been removed but a small intestinal pouch is present. An upper endoscopy which is a upper GI endoscopy at age 25 to 30 or once colorectal polyps are detected, whichever occurs first. Yearly ultrasound of the thyroid may be considered starting at age 25 to 30. A CT or MRI if a person has family history of desmoid tumors or a mutation of the APC gene that is linked with these tumors. Screening options may change over time as new technologies are developed and more is learned about FAP. It is important to talk to your doctor about appropriate screening tests. And finally, let's talk about the treatment options in FAP syndrome. If one has few small polyps, 
the doctor can remove them during a colonoscopy exam. Eventually though, polyps may become too numerous to remove individually. To prevent cancer, the specialist recommends surgery for familial adenomatosis polyposis, which is usually done in the late teens or early 20s of the patient. Surgery may not be required for attenuated FAP. Something to note is that surgery doesn't cure FAP and polyps can continue to form in the remaining or reconstructed parts of the colon, stomach and the small intestine. But with careful monitoring, these polyps can usually be found and removed during colonoscopy or endoscopy before becoming cancerous. Minimally Invasive Colorectal Surgery Most colorectal surgeries are done using minimally invasive laparoscopic techniques. Laparoscopic surgery is performed through several small incisions that require just a stitch or two to close. Minimally invasive surgery usually shortens the hospital stay and allows one to recover more quickly. So just as a quick side note, the picture above in this little rectangular box shows the process in which the polyps are removed and these are called polypectomies. So you can see here this is actually the colonoscope which is entered into the colon of the patient and a snaze deployed through the colonoscope, a snaze closed at the base of the polyp and the polyp is detached and retrieved. So this actually sort of cuts the polyp at the stalk and the main body of this polyp is then removed and this is how the polypectomy process is done. And below we have a picture of the minimally invasive or laparoscopic technique. So now let's talk about the specific surgeries that are used to treat familial adenomatous polyposis and its complications. The first one we'll talk about is the ileal pouch anal anastomosis and this is the J pouch surgery. In this procedure, the colon and rectum are removed while preserving the anus, allowing one to have normal bowel movements. So if you look at my picture on the right, in the upper part, we have the J pouch procedure shown here. So you can see that the colon has been removed, so our patient no longer has the large bowel. And the last portion of the small intestine, which is the ileum, is attached to this part of the anus. So the entire colon has been removed. So this is a complete or total colectomy. And the only portion that remains is this portion of the anus. And then we have the small intestine or the last portion of the small intestine, which is called the ileum, that is attached to the anus. And this is called the J pouch procedure because it sort of makes a J if you look at it closely. So the other procedure is called a total colectomy. And in this procedure, the colon is removed while preserving the rectum and the anus, allowing one to have normal bowel movements. So in this picture below, we have the complete colon which is resected and we have an iliorectal anastomosis, which means that the ileum or the last part of the small bowel is attached to the rectum and the anus. So this is the iliorectal anastomosis. Another procedure is called a continent ileostomy and this surgery is recommended if one's rectum or anus is damaged or the j part surgery isn't feasible. In this procedure, the small intestine is connected to the outside of the body through an opening which is called a stoma in the abdomen. Bowel movements that would normally have emptied through the rectum are then collected in a waste bag that attaches to the stoma. Follow-up treatment. The following may develop after colorectal surgery duodenal polyps and periampulary polyps and this may require the complete resection of the duodenum because these types of polyps can also progress to cancer. Desmoid tumors. Medications such as NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-estrogens, chemotherapy and in some cases surgery can be used to treat these tumors. And finally non-cancerous bone tumors for example the osteomas which we mentioned earlier. The removal of these tumors for pain relief or cosmetic reasons may also be done. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on familial adenomatous polyposis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. I hope you found this video very interesting and informative. If you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.